How's it going there, super friends? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brad the DC Universe Geek, and today we're going to be looking at the Mafex Hush Superman action figure. Will this be the greatest six inch Superman figure ever created, or will we have to just keep waiting for another one to come along? Let's examine him together. Mafex always seems to do a good job of creating fantastic, simplistic, yet attractive box art that looks good on the store shelf, but if you're a mint and boxer, will also look fantastic added to your collection. And in the package, you get obviously the figure, his extra alternate head with the red glowing heat vision eyes, a whole whack of extra Superman hands, as well as one kryptonite ringed Batman hand, and three pieces of ivy for attaching to Superman's wrists and neck. Although as of to date, Mafex still has yet to announce a Poison Ivy action figure. I'm going to assume that eventually they'll get to her, just judging by the number of other Hush characters they've already revealed. I've said it since the beginning, I wouldn't put it past Mafex to release every major character in the Hush storyline. So looking at this highly anticipated Superman figure up close, we're going to find out exactly what they get right, and the things that they get wrong. I feel like the combination of lighter blue with shading in the muscles, by the way, along with that slightly more muted red, at least when it comes to the S cape and trunks, looks perfectly fine together. Those colors complement each other nicely. However, with this figure, Mafex did decide to go with a more creamy yellow, a much more muted tone than Superman usually has. Like typically, the color of the background that he's being photographed against should at least be the color of his belt and the inside of his S. At first, I'd thought that the lighter yellow was really just a camera trick because of the flash of people's cameras, but no, that, that was the actual color. Some areas where I feel like they could have at least produced my Superman figure better, and actually, full disclosure, I ordered two of these. Both of them have messy S's. Whether the red paint has been stenciled or stamped on, it doesn't really line up with the sculpted S on his chest. And mine's also got some ugly glue splotches that stick out from where they've attached his chest to his uh, torso. And now onto the head sculpts, which I must say both have been produced quite neatly. Looking at the basic head sculpt first, all the paint has gone where it's supposed to go. They've used that weird paint steeple technique to color in his lips and eyes. Up close, you really notice it. It's kind of ugly. And why are his eyebrows blue? But stepping back, you really don't notice those things. They, it, just, it looks really neat and tidy when you just have it in hand. And the same thing can be as accurately stated for the one with the red eyes and the gritty teeth. Looks ugly this close, but when you're holding it in the hand, it, it looks fine. Two things that I might say where Mafex could have done things better. A, I do kind of feel like that head is a little bit too small. Like, that looks too small, right? Compared to the Bruce Wayne head, which would be the proper scale for this figure, it just looks like it's a little bit on the petite side. And then secondarily, I would rather his spit curl be facing the other direction so that it makes an S on his forehead, like it's usually depicted. But in general, even with the slightly problematically scaled head sculpt, this figure still does look fantastic in general. Now, as for how the cape is attached to the torso, I gotta give them points for trying to be creative. The pectoral area, which is where that glue that I was mentioning earlier has popped out the bottom, the pectoral area is actually a separate attachment that goes onto the body right there. And you can see that the cape actually is fit underneath it. So it is a very interesting and creative way of tackling the cape tuck situation. I gotta give him points for that. The cape itself also has some pleating down the sides here to kind of bunch it up and give it that over the shoulder look. And it's a wired cape, which is nice. Those of us who appreciate a wired Superman cape have one here, and the wires aren't along the bottom, they're along the sides, which is where they're supposed to be, and then you've got that big S on the back of his cape, which is nice that they included it. <laughs> I'm glad the S is there. However, can you see something missing? Anything at all? There you go. Yep, that's missing. I'm not sure why they decided to omit the little check mark detail at the top of Superman's S, but for some reason they decided to. Now the cape is a nice fabric. It is a very, very high quality fabric that they've used here. So no complaints there. You can't see behind it like you could the Batman cape. And this cape is actually really, really easy to maneuver and pose. I really like this wired cape. And as you can see, it just really easily tucks back over his shoulders again. No problem. Now the next question would be exactly how articulated Soupy is. Well, for one, you can see that uh, he's got a ball joint right here in the torso. So there's and that form of articulation, and he's also got a ball joint in the waist. Now the waist is uh, very, very tight. 
Eh, it does move, and there is articulation there, but when you combine it with the chest, you can get him into a good flight pose. Soups also has what you would call a butterfly hinge right here. Again, it's not really a butterfly hinge. It's more like what you get with the McFarlane toys. It's just a ball joint in another rounded joint that kind of pivots and goes around in a circle. And just like with the torso, you can see exactly how they're attached here. That's, that's not bad. That's nice and tight too. Lifting back the rounded hinge, you can also see that he's got a bicep swivel and it is attached by a ball joint just like that. Now, I do want to warn you that that one took very little effort to pull off. So, oh well, look at that, and you can pull off his bicep swivel. <laughs> oh, that's hideous, let's fix that. You can also see that Superman's got double jointed elbows, and also the rounded hinges right here in the wrists. Which means he's got really, really good arm articulation. There, there probably won't be very many poses you won't be able to get him into as far as the arms are concerned, because that's a pretty darn good range of motion as far as I'm concerned. From the waist down, you can see in there he's got little ball joints, and they're also drop hinges, and they go right up inside his super briefs there which I think is good. That offers a much better range of articulation. I feel like drop hinges are pretty much a standard if you want to have really well articulated legs. There is rotation around that ball hinge. No thigh cut. They've opted to put the articulation point up inside the trunks there. He's also got a double jointed knee and my goodness, talk about super flight poses. And of course, the rounded hinge ankle pivot articulation and toe articulation. So as you can see, Superman's got more than enough articulation to get him into pretty much any pose you'd be looking to get him into, be it flight or standing or otherwise. Now for comparisons in no particular order, we have the weak ankles, gangly limbs DC Essential Superman on the left, and the original DC Direct OG Hush Superman on the right. And next up we have both of the different DC Icons versions of Superman. We have the Rebirth on the left, and we have the original Wave 1 version on the right. Next on the left we have a DC Multiverse scale Superman, and on the right we have one that utilizes the DC Universe Classics body buck. And how about one of the Mezco 112th Collective Scale, as well as the SH Figure Arts Injustice Superman. Dictator Soups. And then how about the Wave 1 Superman from McFarlane's DC Multiverse, alongside the NECA on the right. And how about alongside two Cavill Soups? One from Mafex, that's the one on the left, and one from SH Figure Arts, that's the one on the right. And then finally here, it only makes sense that I would bring in the Hush Batman figure from this lineup, and also the DC Icons Wonder Woman, because I feel like she scales really nicely alongside this Superman figure. And as someone who has spent a lot of time and effort trying to create what I consider to be the perfect six inch scale Superman figure, does this guy do it for me? Am I going to stop customizing Superman figures because, well, this guy's the Superman figure I've been waiting for? Well, hard to tell. It, probably not. <laughs> I still enjoy making my own custom creations. But as a final verdict, that doesn't mean that this isn't probably one of the best 6-inch scale Superman figures, vanilla, that's ever been released on the market. But I suppose the real question I need to be asking at the end of this review is, as someone who's poked and prodded at this guy and put him under the lights and reviewed him fully and completely, can I now suggest him to you as a consumer? Is this a Superman figure worth your time and effort to track down and add to your collection, whether you collect strictly DC figures or whether you're someone who just likes those higher priced imports? Is this a figure that I can recommend to you? Well, even though there are things about this figure where I feel Mafex may have missed the mark, like even though the cape doesn't really look like it's tucked into the neckline of his uniform, and the yellow is definitely more muted, and as far as my opinion goes, the head is just a little bit on the small side, and he is missing that triangle in the back of his cape, none of those issues for me would be make or break. I feel like overall, the general visual appeal and quality of this figure more than suffices. I think that it looks fantastic. He's gonna look great on your shelf. If you're into action figure photography, you're gonna have no problems getting him into ample posed positions. And the issue of the head being perhaps just a little bit too small, well, there are other customizable options out there. So yeah, as a collector and a Superman fan, 
I could definitely stand behind you picking this figure up. I've really enjoyed reviewing him, that's the good and the bad, and I feel like he was worth my time and effort to review and add to my collection, so I could recommend that you add him to yours. Anyway, super friends, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching, taking the time to check out my review of the Mafex Hush Superman action figure. Hopefully you found it useful, or at the very least, a somewhat entertaining piece of your day. If you did, you know where all the buttons are to do all the things, and I will see you with the next one. Have a super awesome, fantastic DC day, super friends, and take care.